Lee, you're a Manchester City fan. How do you feel about all of this? Yeah, well, um, really, really frustrated. I mean, I'm going to say one thing first and foremost, Crookie, and, and everybody's entitled to their opinion, and of course they are, but uh, anybody else that's not a Manchester City fan, and especially coming from a Manchester United persuasion, shouldn't assume to speak on behalf of Man City fans. Uh, I don't think you represent our views on this at all. Manchester Go on then, give City me your views. My, my allegiances so Man- are nothing to do with this, by the way. Football is tribal. This, for me, isn't a tribal matter. Yeah, but it's a human nature and you can't help but have uh, your own internal feelings associated with something like this. Although, Lee, you're now talking on behalf of Crookie and his thoughts, but but anyway. No, I'm not. I'm talking on behalf of human factors. What I'm saying is, the top and bottom of this is, nobody can argue that they will be comfortable with this situation, whether it's Manchester City, Chelsea, Newcastle, anything. My issue is this. If you're going to have rules around the Premier League that seek to uh, maintain competitive spirit of the league, seek to maintain the integrity of the league, first and foremost, they have to be legal. Okay? You cannot, that has to be the starting position. You cannot, just because it's sport, diminish the law. That's just just a fact of anything. The second thing I'd say about it is, where was the energy from other football clubs and the media and everybody else when this horse bolted years ago. This isn't about City or Newcastle. This happened years ago. First it was Jack Walker. Then we had the influx of the American ownership, which massively step changed the financial values of the whole revenue streams associated with football. No energy to protect the future of the game there. Then we had Roman Abramovich and then Usmanov, etc. and the Russian uh, kind of interest in the league. Starting to see a little bit of energy, but not this much. Now we have, and we see it every single day, before 115, the buzzword of rival supporters was oil money. That's what it was described as. Mm-hmm. That's what our club is talking about. All of a sudden, the legitimacy of those revenue streams gets challenged because of where that money comes from. Where was the energy to stop this when it was America? Where was the energy when it was Russia? We didn't see it. And now all of a sudden, because it's city and because it's uh, the, the, the Middle East... The, the legitimacy of the money gets challenged. What I would say is, at the top and bottom of this, it doesn't matter about where the money has come from. It doesn't matter about anything. It matters about, actually, what is it, what's the basis of City challenging this? They're challenging this particular ruling. They didn't vote for it. They made it clear, as I understood it, at the time, that, no, we didn't vote for it. And actually, if you try to enforce it, we will legally challenge it. OK? They made that clear at the time. The Premier League have taken their action. City have got the right to take their action on it because it's illegal. But you, can, but you can't concerns. sue every time that the vote doesn't go your way. If, if you're a member of the Premier League, you know 14 votes in favour and the proposal will be accepted. So, I mean, this opens a whole can of worms. Does it? Every, every time a vote goes against a club, they can just call in the lawyers. Is that is that what we want to happen now? Do we want the Premier League to be run by lawyers or do we want to be talking about the brilliance of Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva and Erling Haaland's goal-scoring exploits? No, we want to be talking about that. Of course we do. And we don't want it run by lawyers. But if something's being implemented... That's where it's going, though, isn't it? You know, all, all we've talked about yeah, this that's, year that's... is PSR, points deductions, legal challenges. I think the reason there's energy now, Lee, and it, it maybe Manchester City can claim they're the victim to this, is because people are fed up with football conversations being dominated by what happens in legal chambers. No, of course they are. Of course they are. And everybody feels like that. But I think what we need to do is clean the house up. This isn't a question of all Manchester City and putting at risk the future of football, etc. Let's clean the house up because I actually think what it's shone a light on is that the whole infrastructure wrapped around the Premier League and its governance is a sham. It's not fit for purpose. What they've tried to bring in for, for several years now are shambolic arrangements that are self-harming to try and govern the Premier League, okay? And they've lost control. The issue is the Premier League. It's not Manchester City. This is about the last 20, 30 years of the uh, revenues and the finances around the game spiralling out of control. They've got People need to put their energy into say, what the hell is going on with the Premier League? Yeah, Lee, uh, not Lee, uh... Manchester City ruining the sport. You make some fantastic points. Thanks very much uh, for calling in. Uh, Roger says, if Manchester City don't want to abide by the Premier League rules, isn't the easiest option to suggest they go and find another competition to play in? Uh, I wonder what Matthew, the Manchester City fan who's called up, would say about that. Matthew, go on, the floor's all yours. Good morning, chaps. Um, 
I just think that, you know, you said earlier in your piece that we should be talking about the greatness of Manchester City. Well, no one does that. No one actually does that. Everyone says, well, it's great, but 1-1-5, they cheated. They're awful. They're a disgrace. So now we're sticking it to the Premier League saying, well, you're not, you know, you're not all that rosy yourself. You know, you've brought in a potential rule change that's unlawful. I think you're skipping over that, by the way. You're, you're very much glazing over the idea that it's against British law, which means it's illegal. And if it's found to be right, then the club's done the right thing. It's, it's, it stopped a law being broken. We had Stefan um, Borson on this programme yesterday, and he, and he clarified that. He said that, that it isn't illegal, this law that's come into place. And he, no, knows, he, 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 he knows a lot more about it than me and Scott, I can tell you that. He said, he said it's going to be hard to prove that it isn't illegal. He didn't say it wasn't. He said it's going to be hard to prove. Okay. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's not. It just means it's going to be hard to prove. Well, that, that could be said, and, though, Matthew, of the Manchester City charges. You know, they're, they're hard to prove, but it doesn't mean it's happened. And, and for the record, I do talk about Manchester City as a team. I do talk about Pep Guardiola as a team. And just combining the sort of the previous caller as well, I think City are unlucky with the timing He's right to mention Jack Walker and Roman Abramovich and and others who have come in as well and spent lots of money. The whole reason why they weren't um, stung at that particular time was because the rules weren't in place at that particular time. And because of all of that that's happened, and Newcastle have now been owned by, by, you know, Saudi-backed state, that the rules have come in. And look, I, I don't disagree from a law point of view, and I'm no lawyer, that you, you, you can't do things that's unlawful. But we need to be careful where English football is going. It's heading towards, if we don't stop it, some may say the horse has already bolted, but we can still try and slow it down or stop it, change it in a different direction, that we don't get to the point where state-owned clubs are the only ones that can win the Premier League. It's all about the competitive nature, what makes it the sexiest league in the world. Matthew, cheers for your call on this. Let's bring in Gareth uh, very quickly. Uh, Gareth in, in Derbyshire. Gareth, uh, you feel like Manchester City uh, are wrong and that if this decision goes against the Premier League, the other team should take quite drastic action. Yeah, well, of course they're wrong because they've signed up to be in the Premier League. I've never really liked the Premier League at all because I like the pyramid where well, before. You know, Ipswich were promoted from what was the second division this season. If you go back to the years before the Premier League, Ipswich would have been able to challenge at the top of the first division. That's what a pyramid is. It's not about actually just having four or five teams from the start that you know are likely to be able to um, win the league, which is what we've got at the moment. Now, as far as Manchester City goes, if they win this legal case, The rest of the clubs in the Premier League, the best thing they could do is resign from it and rejoin the Football League. Just actually leave Manchester City adrift and see who they want to play football against every week because it quite quite clearly... I mean, to be fair to Newcastle, people are talking about Newcastle being in a position, but they haven't caused the difficulties that Manchester City are doing at the moment. You know, new, you haven't seen Newcastle mounting legal cases about wanting to sign every player they can in, in the world and in Europe, but Manchester City are doing that. You know, I've noticed the last two Manchester City fans who have come on have made some speeches about the way football's run, but the reality is they're actually just trying to back the owners of the club up in this legal case because they're trying to make out it. You know, if yeah. you've got an organisation, a league, because you have leagues all over the country, local football associations, and everybody signs up to the league and follows the rules of it. It's not legal like going to the barristers, etc. It's just the, the rules, and the, you have reasons behind those. Yeah, and I... English football, it's on a downward spiral, the Premier League at the moment. It's going to... I mean, I think, I think it's peaked, and it's going to go downhill. I mean, you've seen already, I mean, Klopp's left. I mean, he said he was run out of steam. Guardiola's going next season. So, you know, it's not going to be the same for the next 10 years as it's been for the last 10 years. Gareth, really appreciate the call. He's made, he's made a couple of brilliant points there. And I'm slightly disappointed. Non-Man City fans seem to be having a go at City. City fans are defending the indefensible, in my opinion. Again, this isn't a tribal matter. You can support your football club, but you don't always have to support mm. what the owners do. What we saw uh, when fans joined together to quell the European Super League almost before it had got off the ground 
was they united against their owners because they knew what they were trying to do was fundamentally wrong for English football. And I think it's similar here. Uh, keep the calls coming. 0371722 uh, double on the text. It's Alex Crook and Scott Minto. In for White and Jordan. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.